So here's a, a question that's probably going to show up on, uh, on the multiple choice section of the AP Calculus AB exam. And I like this question a little bit, but I don't like it that much. Uh, the reason I like it is it's interesting. The reason I don't like it is it's a little bit time consuming. This would be on the no calculator section. So here it says, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of 2xy squared plus xy equals y for y equals 1. Um, first thing I'm hoping that you're noticing is that this thing is going to be differentiated probably implicitly, isn't it? Why is that true? Because it's going to be really hard to solve this function in terms of a single y value, isn't it? So given that, look at it this way. The other thing that, so now you're thinking implicit differentiation. The next thing you should be thinking about is that when you, we use implicit differentiation, we need an x and a y value. So we're just going to do a little direct substitution really quickly. So direct substitution. And what I want to know is when y is 1, what's the value of x? So we have 2x1 squared plus x times 1 equals 1. Of course, you see what I'm doing every place that I found a y. I substituted in a 1 into this equation. And that gave us 2x plus x is equal to 1, isn't it? That gives us, sorry, that gives us, <laughs> That gives us 3x is equal to 1, x equals 1 third. So what do we get for that? We got the point 1 third, there's the x value, comma 1. All right, now we'll move on to, uh, to the meat of the matter, and now we're going to differentiate this equation. So this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my equation 2xy squared plus xy is equal to y, and I'm going to differentiate this thing implicitly. Uh, and I'm actually going to do it by parts. So if you don't mind, the first part I want to look at is this part right here. So I'm just going to take this part out. And I'm just going to make a list because I'm just going to differentiate. Remember, we have the sum and difference rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this piece out. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to make a little list. So this is my list number one as I set up my problem. And I'm going to say f of x is equal to 2x, isn't it? f prime at x is equal to 2, right? Because I'm going to use the product rule here, right? g of x is equal to y squared, isn't it? And g prime at x implicitly is 2y dy dx. And you're asking me how I got that? I, I treated this as if it was two, uh, two equations, an inside equation and an outside equation. So the outside would look like this. Right? Just, I'm only going to show it on this one. Show how I did this. But, so what's in pink? I've taken this one equation. I just so I just differentiate that, right? So I said, okay, I brought this 2 down. 2 times 1 is this 2. I uh, decremented the, the exponent by 1 and got that to the first power. And then I took the derivative of the inside, right? And the derivative of y is dy dx, right? It's kind of redundant, but it's true. So now I'm going to build this product rule problem. And remember, the product rule says can we have f of x times g prime at x plus g of x f prime at x, whoops, f prime at x, and that's our derivative, isn't it? So I'm going to just take that, I'm going to bring these pieces over, I'm going to use my pieces, 2x, the derivative um, of this is 2y dy dx, you can stop the video for a second and, and see that I, I am, I'm just picking up these pieces from here and plugging them in, that's why I use this. This plus sign is this one, it says clearly here that g of x is y squared, isn't it? And f prime at x is 2, so hopefully we're okay so far, so good, right? So I'm going to start building this piece out, and I'm going to start taking this derivative. So it's 2x, well, actually, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, so if you don't mind. So 4xy dy dx, dy dx, right? Plus, if I multiply this, I bring the coefficient to the front, plus 2y squared, yeah. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to build the second list over here, if you don't mind. I'm going to build this list 2 because I'm going to use this sum and difference rule, so I'm going to take the derivative of this now. So I'm going to say now that f of x, in this case, is just going to be x. The first derivative of x is just 1, isn't it? g of x is equal to y, and as stupid and redundant as it is, the derivative of y with regard to x is the derivative of y with regard to x, so dy dx. Yeah. Now I'm going to build that piece out the same way I built this one. I'm going to say, right, x times dy dx, right, dy dx, plus y times just 1, isn't it? So that's the derivative here. This 
this piece right here is the derivative of this, isn't it? So I'm going to put it in. So here's my plus sign. So I have x dy dx plus y. And remember, we're over here, right now, we're finally at this last little place here. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to take the, this is what I did. I took the derivative of this thing plus the derivative of that thing, and now I'm going to set it equal to the derivative of that. And we know that the derivative of y is dy dx, isn't it? dy dx. All right, so far so good. All right, so here this becomes a little bit significant to us. Let me just take a quick look at my math, if you don't mind. Do, 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 y. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move all terms containing dy. We're going to leave them on this side. We're move them over to this side. So I'm going to have this 4xy dy dx, right, because we're going to factor that out in a minute, plus this piece, so plus x dy dx. If you don't mind, I'm going to subtract this one from both sides, so minus dy dx, just doing algebra here. And then I'm going to move all the terms that do not involve dy dx to the other side. So we have this one here, and I'll get, use its additive inverse there. So it would be negative 2y, whoops, sorry, negative 2y squared, yeah? And then, of course, I have to get rid of this piece, and its additive inverse is negative y, so minus y. So what did I do? Just a crap load of algebra. So having done that little bit of algebra there, I'm going to factor out dy dx. So we have a factor of it here, here, and here. So factor out dy dx, dy dx, times, right, times 4xy, isn't it? Plus 4x, right, because dy dx times x is x dy dx. And dy dx times negative 1, right, gives us that piece back. And that leaves us with this piece over here, doesn't it? Minus y. So now what we're going to do is divide out, divide out, divide this piece out, if you don't mind. So now I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide. And that leaves us with our dy dx. dy dx is equal to this stays the same, so negative 2y squared minus y. But we're going to divide by this, aren't we? So divided by 4xy plus x minus 1. You're like, holy crap, what, did that, what, what do we buy? What do we get for all that? Well, if you remember, at the very beginning of the problem, we found out that when they gave us that y was 1, right? We did direct substitution, and we found out when y is 1, that x is 1 third, isn't it? And now they're asking us for the derivative of this line, aren't they? So that's kind of where we are. So what we're going to do again is just direct substitution. And if you don't mind, I'm going to directly substitute this in. Every place I found y, I'm going to put in 1. So it's 1 squared. This becomes minus 1, doesn't it? This becomes 1 here, doesn't it? Every place that there was an x, I'm going to put in 1 third. So there's our 1 third. So here's times one third here, yeah, plus one third there, if you don't mind. So we multiply all this together, and we get four times one third is four thirds times one is still four thirds, so we get four thirds plus a third is five thirds, isn't it? So that these two combined give us five thirds, don't they? Right, five thirds, so five thirds. Thirds. Uh, one is the same as three thirds, so th minus three thirds, and five thirds minus three thirds is two thirds. It's two thirds, so it's two thirds here. Um, one squared is one, and negative two times one is negative two. And this is going to just keep this as this, aren't we? So all I'm doing is just really simple math. Now I'm going to just negative two minus. 1 is negative 3, isn't it? Over 2 thirds. Whoops, hello. Over 2 thirds, yeah. Remember, this is a complex fraction, so this thing comes up as its reciprocal. So we have negative 3, that's this one here. It's the same as negative 3 over 1, so that's negative 3 over 1 times 3 halves. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So we have a slope. Slope at y equals 1. All right, I get that was a lot. Good work.